let's look at verse 15 over here. For without those who uh, don't keep the commandments and do the works for their salvation during the eternity phase, who are outside of that? For without, outside of it, are what? Dogs. Now that, God uses the word dog here as reference to a vile, disgusting creature as a sinner. And that's very hard for us humans because we love our dogs, don't we? We love our dogs. But I think that's the reason why the Lord God, He had a soft side for us dogs that He would die for us. He loved us dogs too. But if you're going to be very honest, your dog is a disgusting animal. Does not practice hygiene like you. All right? All right, so let's look at the book of... Uh, if you look at the book of... Uh, well, we're not going to turn over there, but the book of... First and Second Peter. Second Peter talks about a dog where it looks like there's a point of no return for their salvation. So then some people think that's a verse losing your salvation. But in reality, that, that passage where it uses dogs, it matches with Revelation 22. This is what? Tribulation. This is future uh, time period. This is not Christians in the church age. That's what that, pa what, that's what that book is applied to. The book of 2 Peter, the general epistles, general epistles go from Hebrews all the way to Jude, which includes 2 Peter. Those books are tribulation epistles, you got to understand. Now, they have a double application. They're Christ, uh, Schofield rightfully called it Christian Jewish epistles. So you got to understand there's two flavors over there. And I'm not going to explain about double application over here. So I already taught you that in our long time ago Revelation study. But in Revelation, it's impossible to understand when you di dismiss a double application, which is tribulation application and Christian church application. Dropping either or application will make you anti-dispensational or hyper-dispensational. Right. All right. Anyway, let's go back over here. So verse 15, so we can understand that in a tribulation reference, without our dogs, vile, disgusting creatures, sinners, and sorcerers, people who practice sorcery, witches, and whoremongers, all right, that's a male version of a whore, and murderers, people who do murder, and idolaters, people who worship idols. And look at this, whosoever, that's anybody, loveth and maketh a lie, who loves and creates a lie. All right, that includes every one of you, amen? Unless you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. Unless you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyone, anyone who says that, oh, I'm not a sinner, you show them that verse. All right, verse 16, I, Jesus, so now Jesus is addressing himself, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Jesus, so that verse 16 what is a good answer to show why there's a back and forth between Jesus and the angel. See that? Jesus and the angel are addressing these topics. That's the idea. So Jesus sent his angel to testify, to testify all the things that are spoken in the churches. So notice here that churches should know about that. So that's important. So churches are mentioned here. Churches should know about the book of Revelation. Hyper-dispensationalists, also known as grace churches, th these people, all they, all they focus and study is from uh, the book of Romans to Philemon. That's it. But no, Jesus said, no, this is to be read in churches as well. That's important to understand. All right? What does he say to the churches? I am the root and the offspring of David. That's right. Jesus is the root He's from the genealogical branch, so to speak, from David's seed, bloodline. And the bright and morning star. So that's where we get Venus from. Venus is referring to that bright and morning star. Go to Malachi 4. Malachi 4. So the bright and morning star, Venus, is actually, it should not be Ashtoreth Semiramis. It should actually be Jesus Christ. But who wants to take that title? Satan. And he wants to make it perverted by switching God's gender. So let's make it into a female. You got to realize that Ashtoreth and Semiramis, they're just female versions of the devil, you got to understand. A lot of these pagan goddesses is not just from a woman named Semiramis in history. 
uh, a lot of it is, but you got to realize that Semiramis was in the spirit. She had a spirit within her, and that was Satan. Satan will take male and female versions of God. You got to understand. So Venus is referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a bright and morning star over here. So the bright and morning star over here should be in reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you look at the book of Peter, it says the day star arise in your hearts. Look at Malachi chapter 4. We'll read verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So notice right here, he's the sun that rises. That's why he's the bright and morning star. That's what it is. It's that day star that's arising. Why? Because he should be the first throughout your day. Simple as that. But then Isaiah chapter 14, go over there. Isaiah 14, that's why Satan takes that title for himself. In your NIV. In your ESV, in your NASV, and only a demon-possessed, bald-headed, bearded guy who pretends that he knows so much Greek and Hebrew and pretend he's a doctor when he's not and talks all dictionary-wise and intellectual when he's just making up words himself. Gobbledygook, that's what he's basically saying to you. Idiots like that have to be so demon-possessed to justify the title and say that the mistake in Isaiah 14 in our modern versions, no, uh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about it? That's in, you're stealing the title of Jesus Christ and giving it to Satan. So let me show you Isaiah 14, 12. King James Bible says, the King James Bible, this is Lucifer speaking. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, right? All right, so King James Bible says, Lucifer, son of the morning. Modern Bible says, O day star, O morning star. Wait a minute, shouldn't that be Jesus Christ? But then, oh, Satan loves that, so Ashtoreth, Semiramis, me. So tell that Greek scholar of yours that he has a Semiramis Bible. Now go to Revelation 22. Uh, uh, all right. Verse 17, let's wrap this up because we want to finish our Revelation studies. Verse 17, and the Spirit and the Bride say, come. So notice the Holy Spirit and the Bride of Jesus Christ, they invite people to come. Verse 17 is a church age doctrine application. Don't be a hyper dispensationalist and say this is only tribulation. No, this is uh, verse 16, we see that. It was to be read to churches. Verse 17, this is a church age doctrine here. Anybody today who wants to salvation, invite them to come. Let him that heareth, if you hear this, say come. So this is referring to us then. If we heard the Spirit and the Bride say come, it is our part to also say to other people to come. So if the, verse 17, the spirit and the bride invites this person who's a lost person here, hey, come, God expects that the pers this lost person who heard the invitation to tell their lost people to come. Who's an example? Uh, John chapter 4, the, the woman, uh, the Samaritan woman. And by the way, what did Jesus invite her to what? Drink. Yeah. And this is the verse here. Uh, come, let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. See that? Matches with John 4 to a T. Church age doctrine right there. So uh, how is this biblical too? Is Acts 16.31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Period? No. And thy house. They expect that, say, pers uh, that person that lost sinner to invite their lost friends to salvation too. All right then. Now, notice over here that uh, the middle of verse 17, let him that is a thirst, if anyone is thirsty, come. And whosoever will. Did you read that? Yeah. So everyone has a free will. 
give me a verse that says free will, says some dumb Calvinist. And you read verse 17. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life, what? Free. Freely. If you have a free will, you drink it. The only person who wants you to rot and die of thirst like them is a deadhead Calvinist. Yeah. Now, do you know why I kick really hard on these modern version scholars, these Calvinists? They're combined together. These people are, act like intellectual scholars when they didn't even graduate from prestigious universities. It's in any seminary that probably any young person over here can apply for. And these people belittle Christians who love their King James Bible, who believe in the perfect word of God, and they said, no, you're wrong because I know Greek and Hebrew more than you, and they talk down on you. These kind of wicked people should be kicked. That includes Apologia Studios by Jeff Durbin, and that is James White with his uh, uh, Alpha and Omega Ministries, and this includes uh, R.C. Sproul, John MacArthur, John Piper, and all these intellectuals, and Paul Washer. These guys are people who deceive people's souls thinking that modern versions are okay and then they adhere to some form of Calvinism. These people, you got to watch out for them. GotQuestions.org, Calvinist. Yeah. C-A-R-M, Answers to Christians, Calvinist. Calvinists are taking over the Bible question platform yes. and online. They're taking all over online. You got to watch out for these guys. They are taking over YouTube, Google, the internet. These guys have over half a million subscribers. Some of you who got shocked hearing that just now or onlineers who are shocked hearing that now, now you know. Amen. You know why you need to know that? Because then you're going to follow in blind deception through these teachers. They think modern version, Bible versions are okay and they think that Calvinism is okay. No, that's heresy in the Word of God. God believes that you have a free will and you have the free choice to reject or to receive His Son. All right, so uh, let him take the water of life freely. So drink it. Anyone who will, drink. Verse 18 and 19, watch out. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. God says, I'm testifying to anyone who hears anything that is said in this book, the prophecy of this book, the book of his prophecy, right? If you hear this word, if any man shall add unto these things, if you're going to add to those words, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So God's going to give you the plagues. But it becomes worse. Verse 19. And if any uh, man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, anything from the words of the book of this prophecy here, if you take it out, then God says God shall take away his part out of the book of life. God's going to take out your name out of the book of life and out of the holy city. Gets you out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Any of the beautiful things that he wrote in this book that's, that he invites you, he takes you out of there. Now the problem is, is that there are some people who think that this is a verse that proves that Christians can lose their salvation. No, there is nothing that can make you lose your salvation. Did you forget the context that Verse 14, the Holy, uh, okay, so then here are some clues here. Verse 19 says out of the Holy City, right? Verse 14, we know that's for tribulation application, correct? Verse 14, Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do His commandment. It's for people over here, right? Notice over here that, uh, that the city, uh, it, verse 14, the gates of the city is mentioned here. So that matches with Revelation 22, 19 there. See that? Look at chapter 22, verse 18. Plagues that are what? Written in this book. I don't see the seven sealed judgments on James White bald head yet, although there's plenty of space over there. <laughs> not on his shiny bald head. You know why it's not over there? Because this is a tribulation application. See that? So don't let these two verses scare you away from your salvation. These two verses are ap applicable during a tribulation timeline over there, you got to understand. A tribulation timeline. Now, uh, I have to, I always have to uh, explain myself. Sometimes if I just keep going, then people are going to misunderstand me. So I'm sorry if some people misunderstand my sarcasm, but you should know that by now throughout my videos, if you watch a lot of my videos. 
Sarcasm is not going to lead me against false prophets. The people who I kick more than, uh, more than the demon-possessed liberals today, believe it or not, are false prophets. You know why? These people are responsible not for your lives, they're responsible for your souls. It's one thing you get these liberals and these other idiots who just mess ruin people's lives, but that's all they care about is lives, black lives matter, whatever, you know. So, but these people are feeding your soul and you think they're from God, what they're speaking. So I take that way more serious. If there's a person that I kick more is pastors. Why do you think that I don't joke around with this position? This is a serious position. Yes, if any of you take this position, you better think that this is not a game. Yes, You're responsible for people's soul. Why? Because you wasted your time coming here today, voluntarily speaking. You gave money here out of your voluntary measure here. Why? Because that's how much power a pastor has. All right, but anyway. Uh, Proverbs chapter, Deuteronomy 4, Deuteronomy 4, Deuteronomy 4 and Proverbs chapter 30 are the places you want to go where it talks about, it's not just adding, taking words out of this book here, God condemns it in his Bible. So this doesn't mean that people get away with it. We're not, uh, we're not making people get away with it by applying it to the tribulation. No, we're giving assurance of salvation here. But that doesn't mean that God approves of it. Because Deuteronomy 4, Proverbs 30, and even Revelation 22, you can tell God's not happy, basically, if you take out words from his Bible or if you add to it. Now, James White, the reason why I'm bringing him up again is that he's brought up the criticism that Revelation 22 was just about the book of Revelation. It's not about the Bible. So when we scholars take out words from the King James Bible or add to the King James Bible, it doesn't apply to us. I wonder why he says that. It's like he's, like he's scared of this verse applying to him. Why does this say, he say it's only applying to the book of Revelation, not the Bible? Why would he say that? I could have used better arguments if I was an issue. It's as if he can't deny that verse. So then you know how my argument is against him? It's simple. This is what intellectual geniuses do that they become so stupid. Okay, let's drop the Bible and let's just put Revelation in there. Modern Bibles who take out words from the book of Revelation or add words in the book of Revelation, they're not free from that judgment either. How about that? See, that doesn't make you scot-free. What a dummy thinking that's a smart argument. Oh, Gene, that's, that's stupid. It's about the book of Revelation, not the Bible. You're stupid, you fool. You just admitted that I'm in trouble. <laughs> We're taking out words out and adding words to the book of Revelation. All right, go back to Revelation 22. What an idiot. If there are people I criticize heavily are intellectuals. Amen. Intellectuals. Because they... The intellectuals make me stinking angry and making you people so belittle like you're lower and beneath them so I should give them the same courtesy and proper politeness in return. It's proper manners, proper etiquette to do that. Alright, verse uh, 20. He which testifies these things saith, so Jesus is the one who testifies everything that happened in the book of Revelation. And he says again, surely... So that means it is what thousand percent going to happen. Certainly, certainly, surely I come quickly. See, this is what? Surely this is behold. This is this doctrine is a hundred percent true. So if there's some idiot online who tries to make you doubt a pre-tribulation rapture doctrine or the imminent return of Jesus Christ, then they're a heretic according to Revelation 22 because Jesus repeated three times so that you can get the memo here. All right. Surely I come quickly. Amen. And he put an amen over here too. All right. We got a lot of amens, right? I remember one of these idiotic trolls who denied a pre-tribulation rapture, but he trolled inside our church so that he can report to his church any problem that we've got. And then I felt sorry for that poor loser. None of my members were idiots. And then I said, how many of you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture? And all my members went, amen, except that guy. That guy was like, he didn't return after that. And I don't think they ever sent another troll after that. They knew that they don't mess around with us. 
So these cowards try to put a documentary against yours truly after that. Why? Because they're cowards who retreat to the internet. They can't stick up like a man face to face. All right, well, anyway, that's why we respond this way at the last part of verse 20. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Let it be, Lord. Come. Come, Lord Jesus. That's the greatest prayer in your Bible, and you want to mark down Revelation 22, 20 as the greatest prayer that you want to pray in your Bible, is even so, come Lord Jesus. So if you want the rapture to sound, you want to live in this happiness forever after, then pray even so, come Lord Jesus. And then God gives you this closing, which is found in nearly all of our Pauline epistles, one of the greatest verses. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And all of God's people said? Amen. Amen. So then 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul says, The Lord gives grace to His people so that you can live for Him, so that you can do great things for Him. So now that we concluded our Revelation study, what does God say after you hear all these things? He wants to assure you after all this Revelation study that it's not about looking forward to the Antichrist, or vaccine being 666, or getting angry at the government, and building a kingdom, resisting the government, the powers that be, and we got to fight the Antichrist. No, out of everything, out of all this evil and this chaos, you know what he's saying to you right now? Hey, I'm coming quickly. And you got to re respond back, even so come Lord Jesus. And then God says, my grace is going to be with you all the way. All right. What a great way to close about end times.